right, so with that out of the way, welcome everyone back to another episode of Herbal Prepper Live. Our show airs live every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern and 4 p.m. Pacific. Today is Sunday, uh, June 18th, 2017. And so I just want to welcome everyone who is tuning in live this Father's Day evening. So um, thank you for everyone for being here. Hello to everyone in the chat room and also to everyone who are who will be listening to the download later on. This week, we are talking about um, adrenal fatigue. This is something that can be very difficult to get a diagnosis of because it's not an official, officially recognized condition. So um, I'm going to give you my thoughts on that in a moment. So for everyone who is listening live, if you have something that you would like to share, or if you have a nagging question, please join us here in the chat room live during the broadcast on PrepperBroadcasting.com and type your question into the chat room, or better yet, take advantage of this being a live broadcast and call into the show. The phone number to do so is 347-202-0228. Again, that number is 347-202-0228. So before we get started, we have a little business um, to get out of the way here. So if you're listening over a blog talk, come on over and join us here in the chat room on Prepper Broadcasting. While you are here, please do check out all of the other shows that go on all week long. Please go check the other hosts' pages out. Go check all of their archives. There's tons of preparedness information here. I'm sure that you will find an answer to whatever question you may possibly have. I'd also like to remind everyone that I have two books that need to be in your Prepper's library. Uh, the first one is Prepper's Natural Medicine. This, when I was writing this, I really tried to keep in mind, you know, what did I want to know when I was starting out? And, you know, it's got a great skills section. It's got, you know, the therapeutic uh, properties of over 50 herbs. It's got some formulas that you can use to get you up and going, you know, and get, get yourself a little um, confidence uh, making herbal remedies. The next one is prepping for a pandemic. And there, there's just so much information in this book. It takes your uh, preparedness up to a whole other level. It looks at all of the lessons that we could learn from what happened in the Ebola pandemic um, of a few years back. What can we learn from that? How do people respond? How do governments respond? How does the media respond? how do uh, medical personnel respond, and it looks at all of that and what you can do to be better prepared, but it also looks at what are the top risks for the next great pandemic, and, and how could those be approached from both, um, you know, a conventional and an herbal uh, approach, where where there, where there actually is an approach available. There's some of them that just there aren't, um, you know, and I cover that too, and there's also illnesses that are very common to follow pandemics or any disaster, to be quite honest. So lots of information there. Make sure that you have both of them on your bookshelf. Both of them can be found in the Prepper Broadcasting bookstore. Um, Amazon, Barnes & Noble's your local bookstore if you got one. Um, and if you're feeling generous, please consider donating a copy to your local library. Okay, so uh, just a couple more things to say here. Next week's show... Um, I'm going to I'm going to try and take a stab at something that's kind of big that um people have been asking for for a long time but it is a big topic and I can probably guarantee it's probably going to be more than one week on that. Um I don't know that I'll do two weeks in a row on it, but um there's probably going to be a lot more to come back to on that. And that's going to be fibromyalgia. It's it's a really big topic. Um, I'm going to touch on it just a little itty bitty bit tonight. Um, but a lot of people, when they have written in um, with questions about, you know, you know, could I do a show on this or that, that's been a big one for a long time. And um, it's a little bit like a trip down the rabbit hole um, with that. But I'm going to at least try and take a stab at it uh, next week. Um, I have two other things that I need to mention here. So I... I have two classes that are available um, on my website right now. One of them is the Herbal Burn Care course, and it's on sale. I've reduced the price. Um, it's, it's 
I don't know. I, it's going to be um, thirty dollars instead of forty until Tuesday morning, and I, I may do this again. I may not, but that course in the next couple of weeks is going to be getting a little bit of a facelift, and there's going to be a lot more stuff added to it, and it's um, it's been a work in progress here that's been going on in the background for a bit, um, and the the it's going to be a larger course than what it was by you know. Um, and uh, the price is going to go up a little bit. If you still want to get it now when it's in this form, um, I've lowered the price because I think some of the um, the recordings when I made it, it was some older technology and I got a little, I was a little wordy because originally um, this was recorded for um, when people really didn't know who I was and such. And so Anyway, there's some, there is a little bit of, um, wordiness to it. But if you don't mind putting up with that a little bit, you're going to get essentially the same course for, um, a little bit less money. So that's going to be up on the website until Tuesday morning. Something else that's going to be up on the website until Tuesday morning is the next session for the Herbal Skills Intensive. Registration is open as of right now. So you're the first people to hear about it. It's going to go out in the, Newsletter um, tonight for tomorrow morning. Registration is for the August session. So what will happen is you need to either go, you're going to go to herbalprepper.com, click enter site, and then you will look in the menu bar and you will see um, online courses and then you'll find um, the Herbal Skills Intensive. Loads of places to click there but um, to get to where you register. But there's tons of information on everything that it covers. Or you can take the quick, um, the shortcut to that and just hit on shop. I don't know how to change the word shop on there. It should say something like register instead of shop. But um, that, I guess that's the default. I just have to figure out how to change that, that setting. Um, but anyway, you can use that to register now. Uh, the, the registration system I had before was I think a little cumbersome and kept sending out um, reminders and people thought they were um, that the class was going on when the reminders were being given. And it just, it was, um, it was a bulky system. So everything right now is about streamlining and making these classes run as simply and as easily as possible. So for tonight, if you are interested in registering early, there is going to be a flash sale tonight through Tuesday morning. Um, on the Herbal Skills Intensive, and it would have been $97. It's going to be $77. Um, I thought long and hard, but then after that, it's going to go right back up to $97. So um, I thought long and hard about how to make it better, whether I should, you know, increase the cost of it or if I should keep it the same or, or, or what have you. Um, I decided against raising the cost. Um, what I'm going to do instead um, to make this easier on everyone is that, um, I'm going to provide a, instead of me providing all of the herbs and trying to bag all of these, there, there's tons of these little bags. I can't even describe to you what it was. So, um, I have them all arranged by week and everything. And I, I was trying to be so super organized and it was taking up an obscene amount of time. I'm just going to, rather than raise the cost of the course to cover my cost of the herbs, I'm just going to provide everyone with a shopping list of what they need and some really awesome herbal suppliers from where you can get um, your supplies. I mean, you're free to get them from wherever, but, you know, this will be a little bit tailored, you know, specifically for this class. Um, so uh, I think that will will help things get started off without um, without wasting a whole lot of time on, on my end with that. And I've also tried to make it more fair for people who are in all different time zones to get the lecture material. And so that everybody gets the same lecture. I've recorded them all. And, uh, well, actually I've recorded five out of eight of them. So I still have to record those three, but I'll get that banged out this week. And, um, there will still be a live component to it. There will be a live Q&A, and it's going to be a little earlier in the evening. It will be recorded, so um, there still will be the weekly live interaction, but it's only going to be for an hour. And, you know, it people from all time zones here, you know, in the U.S. should be able to attend. But even for people who um, who are not in the United States, 
I think the way this will work because I, I actually had to try shipping herbs overseas in a couple of places, one to Ireland and one to Australia. And it was, uh, I, I don't even want to get into the customs problems shipping herbs that I was, um, that, that I was, that, that I was faced with. So, um, I'm not doing that anymore. So I can open it up you know, to other people from other countries. So as long as there's this weekly live Q&A, it's going to be recorded. It'll get emailed to everybody. So it kind of expands, um, you know, who can who can benefit from it. So that's that. It's it's 77 right now until Tuesday morning. And after that, it's going to go back up to 97. I don't know. <clears throat> I may do a coupon or two here or there just for, you know, people maybe who tune in every week and follow me, you wonderful people. Maybe I will throw that out here or there along the way, but um, I'm, I'm not going to promise anything, but there's a flash sale until Tuesday morning. All right. So that's, oh, no, one other piece of this. No, I did mention it. Next week was, was fibromyalgia. All right. So I got that already. So that's it. We're going to go ahead and take a break here. When we come back, I'm going to start um, the conversation about adrenal fatigue. All right. So we will be right back. All right. So. We're back, and I did forget to mention one other thing. In um, in one week, there's going to be, and might even be before that, but um, but next week there's also going to be the next course that is part of the herbal certification program is going to be available for um, registration. So um, I will have details for you on that second course. There, there's like three courses that are um, required, and then there's some. Um, there's a couple of, uh, there's a few, um, oh, what's the word there? Um, electives, electives to pick from, but the herbal skills intensive is one of the requirements, the essentials of herbal practice. It was called, uh, I was just going to do an ethics class. Um, but, um, I'm not just going to do an ethics class. I'm going to, I'm doing something a little broader, um, the essentials of herbal practice, pra- practice. Let's see if I can speak today. And, um, the ethics class is going to be part of that. So, um, but there's a, there's a lot of other cool stuff in there, but I'll tell you more about that next week. All right. So uh, let's just talk a little bit about adrenal fatigue. So this is, this is one of those, this is one of those conditions where people are still arguing whether or not it's real. And, you know, you can go to one doctor who, if you, you know, tell them you think that you have adrenal fatigue, they're going to give you a lecture about, you know, don't be reading, you know, silly things online and don't get your medical advice from the internet. And that's not what it is at all. There are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people, you know, that, that go to the doctor to complain about this. In fact, this may be one of the most, um, widespread undiagnosed illnesses um that uh that we have yes highlander insulin resistance that's another one um some of the, I, I can't get over the fact that, the, that there are still physicians that resist <laughs> they resist the concept that insulin resistance is real just like um polycystic ovarian syndrome they, you know that's is something that uh you know i dealt with for you know so long and you know, is until they have, uh, this is the conclusion that I've come to, unless they have something to prescribe or unless there is a, you know, a treatment that is put into place, um, unless there is, you know, a test that can be run, uh, then it doesn't exist. And there are tests that can be run for um, what's called um, adrenal cortical deficiency. The problem is, is that it doesn't really manifest until the, um, the cortical tissue, uh, you know, your adrenal fatigue here, your adrenals have a huge functional reserve and the adrenal cortical deficiency does not manifest until nine tenths of the cortical tissue has been rendered unresponsive. And that came from, it's a, it's a book of uh, medical illustrations by Frank, Frank Netter, um, SIBA collection volume four. It's, um, uh, it, it's one of these, um, medical books that you can get if you're interested in that kind of thing. And you think that sort of thing is fun and you flip through those pictures and 
flip through medical journals and such and we find this kind of information. So nine tenths of the cortical tissue have to be rendered unresponsive. That's a, that's a lot. So in the meantime, you're, you're ill and you're still ill and you're ill and you're ill and you're ill, but you're not really testing, you're, you're not testing positive for it. So no wonder, you know, you're not going to be diagnosed with that. Um, again, there's really not much that you're going, there's not much relief that you're going to get at the doctor's office. There isn't a pill that they can prescribe for it. Um, I recall very, um, distinctly the time when, you know, after years, um, maybe a decade, no longer than a decade, maybe about 15 years or so of complaining of the same symptoms over and over and over again to multiple doctors. Um, finally, one of them gave me a diagnosis of PCOS and, you know, it just happened that they had recently approved metformin for the treatment of PCOS. So uh, now that, you know, there was something that you could prescribe for it, you know, all of a sudden now my symptoms were actually a real thing. So, uh, you know, I, I tend to, um, yes, Highlander, a ketogenic diet is used to treat PCO PCOS and, you know, and yes, Jay Fergie, you got to be careful with metformin. And it's, um, it, you know, the ketogenic diet has been key for me in reversing, you know, the, the symptoms of PCOS. But it, until then, you know, it was not acknowledged as a real thing. And there's nothing more frustrating than, you know, you go to the doctor and you've got symptoms. And they're absolutely real to you. And they're blowing it off. Now, this happens with adrenal fatigue, too. And so some of the symptoms, and yes, they, they can be somewhat vague and they can be similar to symptoms of other conditions. But these kinds of syndromes, they're diagnosed normally by, you know, you, ha you don't have to have every single symptom on the list, but you have a preponderance of them. But things that you can be on the lookout, the number one thing, obviously, from the name of it is there's going to be extreme fatigue. And when I say extreme fatigue, I don't just mean, you know, you're, you know, tired or you're just, you know, you're feeling lazy. I'm not talking about that. I mean, you are exhausted all the time. You wake up, you're not alert. It takes you hours to get somewhere close to feeling awake and alert. And that's only with the help of a lot of coffee. And coffee, unfortunately, while it does get you to that semi-awake period at some point, is actually making the thing worse. So you, unfortunately, you do have to get, you have to get rid of coffee in order to recover from this. Um, extreme fatigue would be, you know, your, your first real, well, I don't want to say your first, but it's a, it's the primary, you know, symptom. And, the, what happens is, is that you're in fight or flight response for a prolonged period of time. You're under prolonged stress. Or you could have, like, you could have, um, a series of stressful events. Um, but, you know, we live in this sort of chronic stress all the time. And I know I've talked about it before and I know that Preppers are like, oh, stress, forget it. I can push through this. That's for weaklings. Suck it up, buttercup, and all that wonderful stuff. I've heard it all, and that's wonderful. But at some point, you can only go through so much stress. The body wasn't designed to stay in fight or flight response for years at a time, because that's what we do. That's the way our lives have, have evolved. Unfortunately, our physiology hasn't evolved because physiology takes a lot longer to evolve than um, our daily habits. Fight or flight response, you know, our uh, our adrenal glands, these little itty bitty things that sit on top of our kidneys. And, um, oh yeah, Jay Furry, you know, just, you know, um, for those who aren't watching the chat room, um, we have written in the chat room says, I didn't realize how much stress I was in until the day I was leaving the hospital with my baby. Yeah, yeah, you know, I it's, um, it's amazing when you finally just, you know, when you finally break that cycle of fight or flight and you're actually relaxed for a little while, it's, it's like, oh, wow. Oh, this is, 
this is how I'm supposed to feel, it's pretty um, eye-opening. You don't realize it necessarily while you're in it. And if you're a type A personality like myself, then, you know, relaxation is not your natural state. You know, we want to be productive. We want to get things done. The only problem is, is that, you know, it, you're like a cell phone. And after a while, you have to put it back on the charger. And if you don't, you're going to run out of juice. And that's kind of what's happening here. And it can take a lot longer to recover. And the weaker that battery gets, the, you know, the longer it takes to charge up and the faster it drains the next time. So, oh, geez, yeah, Highlander, that would definitely, that would be a stressful thing, having, having part of the brain removed. That would definitely do it. Um, so when we're under prolonged stress, so what would that be? Maybe that's, um, going to college. I mean, minus all the snowflake stuff that's going on, minus that, because I, I, you know, but I mean, like, I'm talking about like getting your exams done and, and actually, you know, getting, you know, working hard in your classes so that you have a good GPA and then maybe you graduate with some honors so that, you know, if you are going to go to school and, and, and amass this amount of debt that you're going to have when you're done with it, at least you've got, you know, a fighting chance, you know, to stand above, you know, you know, your uh, competitors when you graduate. You know, maybe stress of having to pay off that debt from college. That's stress, you know, and you've got that from year after year after year. Debt is a horrible thing where debt is, is something that causes extreme stress for people over many years. Um, oh, let's see. I mean, there's all kinds of stress. It doesn't have to just be that. Preppers, I think, especially because of the kind of things that we read, you know, the things that we're aware of, the things that we make a point to stay on top of, I think we're especially um, prone to this kind of a, a problem. And, you know, we keep pushing and we keep pushing and we keep pushing. And it's another cup of coffee after another cup of coffee after another cup of coffee. And, you know, quick little pick-me-ups all throughout the day. Or you reach for something that's really sugary to give you that sugar kick. Whatever it happens to be. Um, and the, 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 the problem there is that when you're relying on these stimulants to keep you going, um, you're, you're taxing your system in such a way that take those away and you, there, there, there's a crash coming. Uh, well, actually, even with coffee, there, there's still a crash coming and all of it. There's sugar, there's a crash coming. But I mean, really, when you stop, when, when that event is over, um, you know, like final exams, that's, um, and I'm probably just thinking of that because, you know, I just finished final exams, but when you're done with them, uh, you know, you, you know, you've pushed so hard to get through all of them and afterwards you just kind of, spent like you can't i mean if if when you're done with exams or say you're done with a workout um because working out to excess can also be a big big problem with it um or let's say you've been through several crises in a row um maybe um maybe uh let's see um someone who works for um as as a emergency medical um personnel um who see injuries one after another, after another, works in an ER, someone who sees, um, you know, these people coming in who've, you know, OD'd on drugs or, you know, they've been in accidents and whatnot. And you're seeing all of that every single day, stressful, you know, stressful sights, stress, stress is everywhere. I mean, even if it's, even if your job is somewhat dull, um, you know, there's the stress of, will my job pay enough? And, just modern life is filled with stress, but it's not the stress that our adrenal glands and our and our bodies were evolved to to cope with. We were, you know, we evolved to be able to say, "Oh, there's a bear. I'm out of here. I'm running." You know, that's what we evolved for. You know, is to is to either get away—that's the flight part—or stand and fight. 
you know. Um, and when the emergency is over, you'd calm down. And those hormones would then stop being churned out by your uh, adrenal gland. That cortisol will stop being pumped in, into the into the body and throughout the body. And then, you know, you'll come back to balance where you're supposed to be. But our lives now, we don't, we typically don't get those, oh my gosh, life or death matter kinds of things. Um on a, you know, on a frequent basis, thankfully, um, that may change in the future. Um, but right now we, we typically don't. Um, but we have these other stresses, this low level of chronic stress that doesn't go away. And that has a real physiological impact on the body chemistry. So there's a price to pay at the end of all of that. And what you end up with is this inflammatory condition that, you know, people are referring to as adrenal fatigue. Now, cortisol has a natural rhythm, you know, that helps you wake up in the morning and it helps you to go to sleep at night. And it helps you to um, get through the day. The problem is, is that when you are in fight or flight response continually, and life gets more stressful, that natural rhythm becomes overridden by that fight or flight response, by that, by that call for constant cortisol. So things you can look for other than extreme fatigue, people who have no tolerance whatsoever, you have no tolerance to stress, no tolerance, to little irritations, you know, someone, you know, all, all someone has to do is say like one thing and all of a sudden, boom, that temper is right. They're just short with everybody and the tempers flare very quickly. And, then, and you know, you, afterwards you're like, wait a minute, why am I snapping at people? Why am I doing that? They just ask the question. There's nothing. Nothing rolls off their back, you know. Um, nothing rolls off the back. They they internalize everything. They they don't have the capability of, do, like, for instance, um misspelled words online if they bother you and i and i will admit to this bothering me terribly um but if if you're willing to like have a, a a debate an argument online over someone's spelling you know what it's really not that big of a deal it really isn't but if you're gonna get that irritated about it you may have a problem with uh your tolerance to stress here if you're going to flip out about that, what if it's something actually serious? You know, if you're going to get, if you're going to lose your mind over that. Um, brain fog. A lot of things cause brain fog. So it's not like, oh, well, I'm kind of foggy brain, so it must be adrenal fatigue. No, a lot of things cause brain fog. But this is brain fog. You never feel, you never feel awake, but you're not getting good rest at night either. Adrenal fatigue will wake you up at night. And it will, it will shake you awake because you will have these surges of cortisol at times of the night that you're not supposed, excuse me, that you're not supposed to. And your heart will be pumping loud. And, um, so it, it'll be pumping really, really loud and you'll be hearing it. And, you know, the first time it happens, you might think you're having a heart attack because it's, it's that scary. I mean, you're like, it's the middle of the night. Why am I waking up? You wake up, you're in a panic. And that heart is pumping loud in your ear. And there's, I mean, there's no re, I mean, as if you've been running and, and like running for your life. Um, if you're waking up every couple of hours to that, you're not really sleeping. And of course that becomes this vicious cycle. Um, the other thing that can happen is um, you end up with belly fat. I think a lot of people, when they think of cortisol, they're not thinking of a debilitating, you know, chronic illness that will leave you asleep for, you know, a long, you know, asleep and weak until you recover. Um, at least you can recover from this. So it's not like this is a, a permanent condition, but it can take a long time if you don't completely if you if you don't completely rest, it can take a very long time to recover from, but people do recover from it. Um, 
cortisol, I was talking about belly fat, cortisol, I think most people know of as being the hormone most associated with uh, belly fat. And not just belly fat, but visceral fat. So this is fat that um, if you were to have um, liposuction, visceral fat is not safe to um, extract through that method. That's um, They usually just take out like some surface fat um, when they do those surgeries. Um, but visceral fat is, um, this can permeate into your organs. This is where um, fatty liver disease uh, comes in. So um, there are a lot of conditions that you will find are, are associated with adrenal fatigue where yeah, fatty liver is very, very bad. Basically, you're turning your liver into pate. You know, um, it's not a good thing. The only way that you can reverse fatty liver, um, excuse me, the only way that you can reverse non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, because if obviously if someone um, had fatty liver disease from you can you can um you can give yourself liver disease with other things by drinking too much but if if it's non-alcoholic fatty liver it's because you've put on too much weight um if you're overweight you're almost guaranteed to have a fatty liver yeah i believe that i do because every every client that i've ever worked with when they have um been tested They've, they've also, you know, they, when they've gone for their physical and, you know, they have a liver panel done, if they've been overweight, they have a fatty liver. Um, and it's not just because people are, you know, sitting down and eating more. It's because of the kinds of foods that they're eating. Um, I mean, certainly they are eating more, but when you get those cravings under control, um, you end up eating less and then the calorie thing, uh, you naturally kind of reduce your calories. But that, that's a, that's a topic for another time. Um, but you do end up with this belly fat and it's visceral and it's not the kind that's safe to just extract. It's not just a little bit. But the reason I mention all of that is because just because someone is not obese or they don't look terribly overweight doesn't mean that they can't have this belly fat or that they can't have this visceral fat that's in the liver, you know, and starts to permeate through, you know, the body like that. Um, there are plenty of people who are well within, you know, like a healthy weight range, but maybe they got a little muffin top thing going on. Uh, but they're not, you wouldn't look at them and go, Oh, they're terribly overweight. No, they're, they may not be. You can have people who, um, you know, that are relatively, I don't want to say thin, but they're, I mean, but they're not overweight. Um, you wouldn't look at them and say that person's got a weight problem. But they may still have problems with diabetes and they may still have problems with a fatty liver. And they, it, you know, but I think so it's not that you have to be overweight to have the problems. But if you are overweight, you, you most likely do. So that's um, yes, Highlander, they can. That's absolutely what happens with the refined carbohydrates. Um, so other things that can be associated with this. So, you know, this comes on with prolonged stress. <clears throat> you can also have poor sleeping habits. It is very important if you do have adrenal fatigue to sleep whenever you, whenever you can get it because you need to recover. And if you don't get that sleep, you're not going to recover. And I know I can already hear those personalities in their head saying, hey, I got to get stuff done. You know, I'm not some weak little Nancy here. I got to get stuff done. I, I've i heard all of this before and I've said it myself. So um, what I can tell you is that the more you push yourself, you eventually hit burnout. And, you know, then you'll start to feel better because burnout will force you to stop and relax and recover a little bit. But the moment you start feeling better, you go right back out and do the same thing, don't you? And... Then you end up back in this, this cycle. And then, and every time you get there, it's a little longer before you can recover. A little longer, a little longer. Um, so it's it, sleep habits matter. Try to get to bed at the same time every night if you can. It's very, it, it can be very difficult, um, to do that. Being overweight, that's something that is associated with adrenal fatigue. Depression and anxiety can also um, come along with this, but um, 
it would be, you know, depression and anxiety have been known to be associated with stress as well, so it really shouldn't be that big of a mystery that they'd be associated with adrenal fatigue. You can, however, have people misdiagnosed with depression when they have adrenal fatigue because there are a lot of symptoms that are the same. And I'm not saying that everyone with depression doesn't have depression. They really have adrenal fatigue. It's not what I'm saying. But there are people who, you know, go to the doctor and say, hey, I'm tired. I'm tired all the time. You know, I'm, I'm not myself. I'm not right. And for a long period of time, and, and I, I can only imagine that it's still continuing. Um, I'm thinking of someone specific, um, that this happened to who I know. Um, but he went to the doctor and he was complaining about this fatigue that had overtaken him. He couldn't stay awake. Um, he would get home from work. I mean, he was like ready to sleep from the time he got home, like straight on through, um, when, you know, he'd have to get up to go to work and he couldn't wake up in the morning. He just wasn't himself. And what the doctor did was he prescribed him Prozac and sent him on his way. No, um, he never once, you know, said, Hey, I, I feel depressed. He just said he was tired, you know? So, um, sometimes these things happen and, um, People can be diagnosed with something that they don't actually have. And the, unfortunately, a lot of these antidepressants only make the adrenal fatigue worse. That, that's um, a little beyond where I want to talk about it. But um, it, unfortunately, things like that do happen. Um, but it's certainly not the only explanation for symptoms of depression or anxiety. There's other things as well. Something else that's often associated with adrenal fatigue is an, are autoimmune diseases. And think about this. This is an inflammatory condition. So it should not be a surprise that when you've got all this inflammation that these um, responses in the body, these immune over responses really start to happen when you've got all this inflammation. It is often... Um, seen in people with fibromyalgia, which is partly why next week I'm going to talk a little bit more about fibromyalgia. There are people who I know who, you know, were diagnosed as having fibromyalgia and they did, um, they did some adrenal fatigue protocols. You know, there's, there's a, there's a number of them out there to recover. And amazingly enough, they recovered. Um, so odds are they probably didn't have fibromyalgia. They probably had adrenal fatigue and you have to say probably because well one I can't say anything other than probably because I'm not a doctor and I can't make any sort of diagnosis obviously um but two because adrenal fatigue is not recognized as an official illness so um you know it, it gets a little wonky when you start dealing with these things but all I know is that they're feeling better now and that's ultimately what I want that's what I want to see with people, you know, that they feel better from things. Now, obviously, you know, stressful situations when, I mean, we've all got televisions, we've all seen the news, we've, I mean, we're all, we, we all have access to the internet, we've all seen the news articles and so on. We have a 24-7 news cycle that drives us back guano crazy. And it just never stops. And some of the claims that, that go out there about what's going on, you know that they're, that you, you know that some of these reports are way off base because you can fact check and it's like, it, it can drive you nuts. And then you start to see it shared and repeated and it, it be, and it takes on a life of its own. And these things, um, they, they don't go away. And we can see from watching the news though, that things are escalating and things are, things are troubling to say the least. Um, you know, so I would imagine that, you know, as things continue to progress, that things like these stress related conditions are going to become a real issue. So, um, what can you do about it? Well, you know, I guess some good news and I have some not so good news. So let's get the not so good news out of the way. First of all, you have to just rest. And that's the difficult part. That's the truly difficult part of all of it is that you do have to rest and you have to become like a duck and let things roll off your back. You just can't care for a little while. You can go right back to worrying 
after you recover fully. After you have recharged that battery all the way to the top, you can go right back to worrying. But for right now, you just need to, um, you, you need to pull it back just a little bit, um, to a point where you're not being inundated with stress all over the place. Um, it does seem to come at us from all angles. Get your sleep habits in control. So, um, there's a number of things that you can do for that. There's certainly a number of herbs that you can take. Um, skull cap, I think is very helpful at night, uh, because it helps to calm that chatter. It calms that chatter in the head so that you can get to sleep. I wouldn't take it like immediately before I go to sleep because it doesn't really make me drowsy. It makes some people drowsy. It doesn't make me drowsy. But it calms that inner chatter so that you can get to sleep. So plan that out ahead of time. Um, herbs like passion flower, um, valerian root, these things um, tend to help people fall asleep. Chamomile. Chamomile's never made me fall asleep, but you know, I've seen other people, they have one cup of it and they're ready to take a nap. So um, those are herbs that you can use to help ease you into sleep. You can use um, essential oils to help relax you. Lavender is a very common one. There's certainly many others, but very common, commonly used. Um, frankincense oil is another one that, um, I mean, I, it, I've i seen it used successfully for um, anxiety. Um including um anxiety leaving the house like agoraphobia so um that's also helpful to use if you if you are antsy and like you feel like you just like have to get out of the house um well some agoraphobia is afraid of leaving the house but then some people have the opposite problem where they can't stay and they just have to get outside so whichever way your anxiety is swinging at the moment uh, whether you need to close yourself in and wall your wall yourself in and be protected or whether you need to just get out Either way, you need to just dial it back a little bit. Um, I like frankincense and cedarwood and sandalwood and, and those kind of heavier um, wood-like aromas and so on to just kind of ground me at that point. Um, other things that you can help, um, the other things that you can uh, do to help with this Go back and listen to the show from last week because I covered adaptogens in great detail. One of them that you will really, really, really want to get familiar with is rhodiola rosea. And the other one that you really want to get to know well would be um, um, eleuthero root. Um, those, I, those especially I have found very helpful um, with adrenal fatigue. Tulsi is an herb that you can also um, take that, well, these are all herbs here, but Tulsi is one that you can take when this has been going on for years and years and years and years and you need to really let go of, a, of so many years worth of stress. Um, I don't find that it, it knocks you out or makes you drowsy or anything, but um, it it can help unwind a lot of years of stress. Now, nutritionally, there's some things too. This is an inflammatory condition, so you want to eat anti-inflammatory foods. So guess what? Sugar out the window. It's gone. Caffeine out the window. You don't, you can't have inflammatory foods. Um, if you have any type of food sensitivity, gluten, dairy, eggs, um, nuts, whatever, it just, it depends on what you may have. Um, an, an inflammatory response to. Um, let me see here. Other things that you might need to avoid. I'm trying to think. Oh, like for instance, I mean, you can even go and you can get tested for these types of um, sensitivities. But some people are allergic to um, not gluten or wheat. Well, some people are allergic to wheat and it's not the gluten, but there's other proteins in the wheat they're they are allergic to um but there's also some people who don't have a problem with wheat or gluten but have a problem with yeast like the kind of yeast that's used in baked goods so sometimes like it I, it's it's weird you, they can get a reaction when they eat like you know sandwich bread or a roll or something like that 
Yes, Islander, lactose, um, that's from the dairy and casein from, from dairy as well. Um, so, um, but what I was saying about the, the yeast, I, I mean, I've seen people who they have really bad reactions, you know, if they have, um, like a dinner roll, but when they have, um, something like, um, a, tor- a tortilla wrap or something like that, where there's no yeast involved, they can have it and there's no symptoms and no, nothing happens. So you sometimes pinpointing what irritates you can can take a while to figure out but you want to get rid of anything that's inflammatory you also want to flood yourself with lots of micronutrients um if you don't have any issues with sugars if 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 you're really good with that um you you can do some juicing for a little bit um but you're gonna you have to be picky and choosy about what things you juice with because it can, um, it can get pretty high in sugar very quickly. Um, so there's a lot of like green drinks you can make. I gotta tell you, I can't get those things down. Um, soy can absolutely be an issue, Jean. Um, that soy is a, is a massive problem, especially soy and corn. And, you know, basically our whole manufactured food diet is like soy, corn, wheat, sugar, you know, as some permutation of it. So, you know, a lot of people, that's all the food that they eat is, is something that's inflammatory. Um, there's usually some gut damage that's gone on through this. Oh, Highlander, if you can do a, a shake made with kale and spinach, you know, uh, hats off to you. I, I don't know that I could get that down. A garlic, well, you know what? You'd have to put a, a lot of garlic in there. You know how I like my kale? I like my kale. Uh, lightly um braised or i like it sauteed in bacon fat along with a little bit of bacon now that i like or i like my cream spinach yeah i I would imagine it tastes a lot like grass but the thing is though if you do have adrenal fatigue though it is quite helpful if you do have that kind of stuff so if you if you are into shakes or juicing or any of that try to pick like the dark leafy green stuff because you you know I'd, i'd rather see you have it lightly braised because you'll get more nutrients out of it than you will in the smoothie but that's you know that's an argument for another time um let me see other things that you can do um you can also if 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 you're not going to drink all that stuff then get yourself a really good um a really good multivitamin um I'm not a big fan of taking huge amounts of individual vitamins because that's just not how we find them in nature. But be aware that people with adrenal fatigue tend to be very low in things like potassium, which is necessary for nutrient absorption. So if you're low in potassium, you're probably undernourished in a lot of other things too. So you need that. And where can you get that from? You can get it from bananas, but you can get it from leafy greens, dark leafy greens. You can get it from nettle. You can also get them from avocados. Um, so, and, and, and avocado is a whole lot less anti-inflammatory than some other sources. Um, unless, of course, you have like nut allergies and you can't do um, avocados. Some people have problems with that. So, um, let me see. Other other things that you can oh other things you need to do magnesium is key it's it's so important to get magnesium it will help to calm you down now you you don't necessarily have to take it as a supplement you can make yourself a wonderful herbal bath with bath salts with either epsom salts or you can get magnesium flakes or make um, aromatherapy magnesium flakes or aromatherapy um, bath salts or you can just get yourself a real cheap box of epsom salts and put two cups of them plain in the bathtub and take a soak or you can just put them in a t- in a small foot soak thing if you really want to um so you make that as, e- as simple or as fancy as you'd like um there's of course you can put you know custom uh put that with all those um essential oils and herbs in there that uh, might help you to relax um and get them all at once so uh, magnesium is very important as is the potassium B vitamins, a B complex would be definitely to your benefit. And, um, vitamin D, vitamin, look, all of the things that we're typically, that we're typically low in, it, it becomes that much more important. You need to replenish yourself. And that's the thing is that you need to 
you need to give your son, give yourself time to reboot, to re, um, to recharge. So, you know, avoid stress, get all the sleep that you can. There are adaptogen herbs that can help you get over that hump. Stay away from inf inflammatory foods, eat foods that are anti-inflammatory. And, you know, you may have to unplug for a little while, get out in the garden, go camping, get away from things. Um, so yeah, seven to 10 cups of veggies per day is that's, that's, I'm going to tell you, Highlander, I see that in so many different, um, recommended by so many different experts. You know, it, it, it's definitely something to it. They all package it up differently to, you know, the, however they're going to market it. But that's what it comes down to, um, is lots of vegetables. I mean, I, it, there are a lot of vegetarians out there that don't eat a whole lot of vegetables. They're more like grainitarians, you know, and that, I think that there's a, there's an issue there. Anyway, we're at, we are at the end of the show. I want to remind everybody, um, that next week, we're talking, we're at least starting the conversation about fibromyalgia. Um, we, I have those two classes. They are available for registration with the herbal burn care course. I have to manually add you. So, um, I will, if you register for that within a day or so, I will have you registered for that class. Um, and the herbal skills intensive, you will get an email. Um, and you will get access in August when the class starts, but the flash sale, um, only lasts until Tuesday. So if you like what you've heard, please do connect with me by following me on Facebook, Twitter, G plus Pinterest, and don't forget, subscribe to my YouTube channel, check out herbalprepper.com. And thank you everyone for spending your time with me this evening. I hope you got something out of it. This has been Kat, the Herbal Prepper with Herbal Prepper Live. We will see you again next week.